Okay, ready for today's session? Yeah. Okay, great. So as you remember, last session, uh, we have been talking about uh, loops in general in Java. Uh, we said we have three types of loops, for loop, while loop, and do while loop. And uh, we already discussed the difference between each one of them. And we talked a little bit in detail uh, about for loops. And we had some examples about for loop, like this one. Incrementing for loop starting from zero until five. Okay. And we uh, print these two statement, this one and this one to indicate the start and the end of uh, for loop. Uh, you done another example on your own with uh, countdown uh, uh, for loop, decrementing for loop, starting from five or 10, whatever. And each iteration we decrease. Uh, decrement uh, the number by one okay and this last one is called infinite for loop like we don't give any values or conditions here we just put two uh, semicolons in a row then this will, loop will run forever like it will never break okay Hear me and you see my screen, right? Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Okay, good. That's what we had last session. Uh, today we're gonna continue in for loop. We're gonna talk basically uh, about uh, uh, nested for loops. Okay. So here I will create a new class. I will call it nested for loop. Nested for loop means we have two for loops, one inside the other. Let's see. Like here, I put main method, and as you can see, I just type look M A, and here the suggestion is main. Hit enter. Yes, it's all done for you. Well, let's make one for loop which will be the outer for loop okay first we should put an integer initial value so here int i equal i give it zero okay and uh, the condition is while i is less than five please increment i by one i plus plus okay here inside, I will put a statement to indicate in which iteration uh, we are in, or to indicate the value of i during runtime. So here I will say a value of i equal equal i. So mm -hmm. this statement, okay, will print each time the value of i, okay? Yes. This highlighted space is a for loop body, okay? All code in between these two brackets will get executed in the for loop, okay? This statement is inside the for loop body. Again, here I will make another for loop, okay? Inner for loop. I will call it int j equal zero. Oops. And y j plus five. Make it five or three, okay. Make it three to, to shorten this example. Okay, while j less than three, we will make j plus six. The 
this is small body, okay, is the body of the inner four leaf, okay. So here, I will copy this line, paste it here, also to indicate the value of j, not r. So here, I will say value of j equal j. So can you guess the output of this program? Um, yep. Okay, be, tell me uh, the sequence. Tell me the execution sequence, like uh, what will appear on the screen, line by line. Um, should be uh, less than three. There should be three iterations. In the inner or outer? Uh, outer. No, this outer loop uh, will increment, uh, will be five, yeah. five times. Yes, because yeah, it will start from zero until four. Four is uh, last iteration, less than five. Four. So from zero to four, it will uh, that'll be, zero, that'll be two. Uh, it will the be next two five times. Okay. Here, what is inside this um, body of the for loop? All this highlighted area will get executed five times. Okay. So here, System that out of print value of i equal from zero until four. Okay. Mm -hmm. And each time from zero to four will get the whole inner for loop get executed. Okay. Here the inner for loop has three iterations from zero, one, two, zero, one, two. Three. Mm -hmm. And you have value of j equal j. So, can you expect? Mm, yeah, it would be zero to two, right? Zero to two? Yeah, zero, one, two, the inner one. The outer one from zero to four. Let's run yeah. our program, yeah, and see the result on the screen. Look. First of all, we have the value of i equal zero okay like here i get execute uh, i start this outer loop with value of zero okay and zero is still less than five so i will get execute all this body uh, i print this line value of i equal zero and then i will execute this for loop j equal zero and j or zero less than three so also, this line will get executed. So, value of j also c. Look, value of i equals z. Value of j equals z. Okay. Once we get this line executed, okay, we'll increment j by one. So here, the value of j equals to one. And again, we check this condition. Is one less than three? Right or wrong? Mm -hmm. yes, yes, right. Yes. R, uh, one is less than three. So I get this line again executed here. The value of j equal one. Yeah. Finally, we increment j by one. So one plus one equal two. So j now is two equals to two. Is j yeah. uh, is two less than three? Yes, it's true. So we will execute this line one more time. Here, value of j equal two. And again, we will increment by one. So two plus one equals three. Is three less than three? Is three less than three? Please answer me, true or false? No. No, it's false. Because three equals three, but not less than three. So, this condition break and now we are done with this for loop okay yes okay is there anything here on line number 12 nothing so this the whole body of the outer loop is done executed for one time okay like mm -hmm. this one is the end of the first iteration of the outer loop Okay. 
You understand? Mm, yes, I do. Okay. Now, since we already executed the whole code inside the outer for loop body, we will increment the i by one. So i was zero here. And we'll increment it by one. So zero plus one equal one. The new value of i is one. Let's check the condition. Is one less than five? Yes, one is less than five. So we will execute this body again. Value of i equal one here. Where is it? Yes, value of i equal one. Okay. Yeah. We'll execute this whole for loop one more time. So starting j from zero. J equal zero. And then we increment j by one. And this condition is still true. So j equal one. Again, we'll increment j by one. So j becomes two. And two still less than three. This condition is true. So we'll print this line value of j equal two. Okay. Now we'll increment again j by one. So j will become three. Three is not less than three. So now this uh, condition becomes false. The whole loop will terminate. Okay. And now this is the end of our uh, outer for loop body. So we are done with the second iteration in the outer for loop. Okay. Yes. Okay. I, the value of I was one. Now we will increment I by one. So one plus one equal two. So now I equals two and two is less than five. So this condition in outer for loop is true. We will execute this again. We will print I value of I equal two. And again, we will print J from zero, one, two. Okay. Now we are done with the third iteration of i. We'll increment i by one if i was two. So two plus one equals three. Now i equals three. And three is less than five. So we'll execute this whole code block again. Here we will print value of i equals three. This line. Again. We'll execute the whole inner for loop. We'll print j equal zero, j equal one, j equal two. Yes. This one is the end of our code. We'll increment i again by one. So three plus one equal four. And four is less than five. So we will execute again one more time. Here, print value of i equal four. And we will print the whole uh, values of the statements of j. j values zero, one, two. Okay. We had i equal four. We will increment i by one. So i will become 5, 4 plus 1 equal 5. Okay, we'll check this condition. Is it true? Now value of i equal 5. No, no. 5 less than 5? No, of course not. So this condition uh, will become false and the whole program will terminate. You understand? Yeah, I do. Like, let me execute this one more time with one print statement, okay, I will say in outer, okay, so let's run the yes, okay, first we print i, equal zero. This is our initial value of i. 
and then we will print J0, 1, 2. Because in each iteration of the outer for loop, we will execute the whole inner for loop. Okay. After that, this is the end of our outer for loop. Second iteration of I equal one. And then we will print zero, one, two, all values of J. And again, this is the end of second iteration. Third iteration, I equal two. And then the three lines of J, zero, one, two. And again, in the third iteration. This is the fourth iteration where I equals three. And again, the values of J. Int of four iteration. Final iteration, I equal four. And then J, zero, one, two. In after for, for loop and then end of loop. Okay. You understand? Yeah. Can you execute this program? In mm -hmm. What uh, what is the point of uh, nested? Sometimes you need to like it depends on the logic. Like somehow you have problems that you want to solve, or some logic that you want to execute or implement. So sometimes I need, in each iteration, I need to count a fixed number of counting or do some sort of looping or iterating on a list. Like, uh, let me give you an example. Imagine you have a school, okay? And this school has N or X number of classes, okay? In each class, you have a certain number of uh, uh, students, okay? Number, number of students varies from a class to another. So maybe somehow you want to iterate on classes, okay? Imagine you have two lists, one list called classes, another list called students, okay? Mm -hmm. You will iterate on the first uh, list. The outer for loop will be classes. Okay. And in mm -hmm. each class, you want to loop on each student inside this class. So how you're going to achieve this? Okay. You will achieve it. Use it nested for loop. Okay. You understand? Like imagine, yes. imagine this I is class. Okay. I just ignore all these errors. I'm like trying to make you understand my example. Okay. So this is a class. Okay. And I have n number of classes, maybe two, maybe five, maybe 10. Okay. I want to iterate each and every class in my list. Okay. So I will put my classes. Okay. Iterate by classes here using this outer form. Inside each and every class here, I want to iterate on students studying in this class. So here in the inner loop, I will call it here students. Okay, so inside class number zero, okay, I will I will iterate for students from zero to three to five to 10, whatever, okay? Once I finish all this, and once I finish, once, once I reach this line, okay, it means I'm done with the first class, with class number zero, okay? Then I will move to the second class, class number one, okay? Once I enter class number one, I will iterate again on students who are related to class number one, not class zero, okay? And so on and so on until I finish looping on all classes, finish looping on, stu on all uh, uh, students in all classes. You understand? Yes. Okay, so that's just an example. Like you have infinite number of cases that you may need to use infinite loops while doing it. Okay? And you will experience yeah. it in your life. Just 
when you experience uh, working with some, um, you know, complex project, of course, sometimes you need, yeah, you, you need to use uh, listed loops. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, any questions? Um, no, do you use it often? Do you use nested often? Uh, not often because, you know, in performance, it's somehow slow. So uh, while working, we try to, you know, avoid using nested loops. So it's not often. But sometimes it's, it's a must. Sometimes it's necessary. So we say sometimes, but not often. Okay. Uh, what else? Wow. Feel free to um, ask. I want you to ask any question. I'm happy to answer. Um. Wow. So which which one is the outer the outer loop? The outer loop is the last one, right? Last one. I I didn't which, get your question. Which which one is the outer and which one is the inner? Uh, this one on line number seven is the outer. Okay. Oh, outer. Yes, this one is outer. Wait. Outer loop. Okay. This one, okay. the one inside, okay, we call it inner loop. Inner loop. Okay. So this inner loop will get executed completely, okay, in each iteration of the outer loop. Clear? Yes. Okay, so now it's your turn to implement this example uh, yourself. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, I will stop sharing. You share yours and show me how you're going to do it.